Hi, I'm Seben Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Probing into TI's Comparative Analysis of Two Different Methods for Gay Drive Current Boosting. There is a relevant video to this presentation. Here is the link. And I'm going to print this link on the YouTube page of the video that you are now watching. So this is a review of some of the designs given in this application note. There are many issues that I'm not touching. I'm just probing into one part of this application note. Now this application note proposes two approaches for driving a high power transistor, say MOSFET or IGBT. Transistor is here, gate is here. This is just the driver, okay? So we have here in this one approach, a BJT, they call it totem pole, but actually it's not a totem pole, it's a push-pull. Well, this is the list of our worries in this application node. And so there are two transistors, NPN and PNP. This is very conventional. And there is a one drive here, which is uh, driving this uh, buffer to boost up the current. Another approach is related to MOSFETs and the conventional way or the simple or simple-minded way to do that would be to use two transistors, P-channel and N-channel transistor, and drive them together. But there is a problem here because of the fact that if the voltage here is sort of a midway, both transistors will be conducting. So there will be a problem of a shoot-through here. So this has to be done very carefully, it can be done. Now in this application node, TI suggests to use two transistor, two N-channel transistor, which is better even from the fact that uh, N-channel transistor is better than a P-channel in terms of RD and so on and cost. And however, in this case, you need two drives. You have to drive this transistor and then this transistor separately. So here is the circuit that they suggest this is a sort of a demo board, you might say. And it includes an auxiliary power supply, an isolator for the PWM signal. And then there is a half bridge driver, which is producing two pulses, which of course have to have a dead time between them to avoid a shoot through. And then this goes to the gate of the transistor or IGBT. So looking into the power supply, I see here a flyback. This is a flyback with a primary side control. There is no feedback here from the output to the input. It has a magnetic element with a split winding here. This one is should be about 21 volt and this uh, say minus seven. And then you'll get this rail of 20 volt and this rail of minus six volt approximately. And then they have an LDO for the half bridge driver I'll show later on. And here there's another LDO for the primary side of the isolator. It says here 3.3 volt for the MCU, which will be providing these pulses, but you see, this is an LDO five volt. Okay, this is five volt, like this one. So there is a problem here. Well, either this is correct or this is correct, but certainly not both. Anyhow, it's not nice. So this is the power supply side. And having another look at the unit, again, we have the flyback. We have the rail here, plus minus. The minus six volt is pro to provide a negative voltage to the gate, which is good. And then we have, you see, two banks of capacitors, and these are to absorb the current that goes into the gate and from the gate. This is ground here, so it is actually connected here. So this is one side, and this is another side. So these are sort of a bulk capacitor to accommodate these current, high current supposed to be here. And again, we have a minus six volt bus here to which this half bridge is connected on one side and then it has a plus 5 volt referred to ground on the other side so we have 11 volt across this uh, half bridge driver so this will be the voltage that will drive the driver 
buffer. Okay, these are the buffer transistors. These are not the power transistor. This is the power transistor. This is all, all, only the buffer. They have tested this unit on a one microfarad capacitor, quite a hefty load. So if I do a calculation of the charge for this one microfarad capacitor load, which is driven the swing of 26 volt, that's minus 6 here and plus 20 here, I find that it is 26 microcoulomb, and if I'm assuming 20 kilohertz, then the average current that will go from the power supply will be like uh, 0.5 amp. If I assume at 10 kilohertz, then it will be 0.26. This will be for high power. I may wish to go to a lower frequency. Now, these currents are for, or this capacitance and, and charge are for really related to large transistors or IGBTs. And I am showing here an example. This would be a module, in fact, an Infineon module. This would be a 900M carrying IGBT. And in this case, you will find that the total charge is 14.3, while we are talking about 26 for the one microfarad, okay? So this is actually twice the same. It's really, really hefty uh, load. Now, these transistors here are 10 milliohm, okay? These transistors. And also there is a heatsink here connected to these transistor. And uh, if I look here at the specification of this uh, heatsink, and this is the part number, I see it's a two centimeter times two centimeter and the height of uh, one centimeter approximately with 17.4 degree per watt, okay? So this is the heat sink that they're going to put or they've put. Actually, there is a picture of the board and this is the heat sink that they've put on these transistors, the two transistors. Now, if I calculate the expected power loss of these transistors and the 10 milliohm represent a transistor turn on and turn off and uh, knowing uh, that I have a 6.8 watt power dissipated then I find that if I take into account <coughs> that this line will have at least 0.5 ohm why 0.5 ohm look at this uh, module, you see that the internal resistance is 0.5 ohm. So you can't go below that. So if I assume a 0.5 ohm, I find that the power dissipation of the transistors themselves, and this is for the two transistors, is 136 milliwatts. Okay, you can do the calculation in a different way. You say that uh, this capacitor is being charged, this capacitor, and in fact all this uh, energy is lost cv square well cv square over two is the capacitor loss and charging is the same amount of energy so you come up with the same number and everything is the same of course it's just another way to look at it and then we find that the, for the two transistors it's 136 milliwatt and with the 17 degree centigrade per watt that they have with the heat sink it's 2.3 degrees, so obviously it's an overkill. I mean, you don't need a heat sink like that for 156 milliwatt. It's ridiculous. So now let's go into the actual measurement that were made on this board. And here is the gate is green, and this uh, is the border is the current of the gate, and it's shows a 50 amp peak here and the gate there are two problems here one is kind of a mysterious because it goes to 15 volt now the supply is 20 volt so how come we get only to 15 volt so i just assume that this was taken with another board because this should be 20 volt okay but there is another major problem here the too much oscillation. You don't want the gate voltage to go that high. If this is 15 volt to go to 23, many transistors have a 20 volt 
a maximum gate voltage and you don't want the current of the gate to go back and forth so this is very very poor now if I look at another shot here screenshot and this is the, the off uh, situation this is the gate again lo and behold this is now 20 volt well I don't understand it so obviously they had two boards or they have adjusted the voltage or whatever doesn't look good also I certainly don't like this one uh, this is just an oscillation which usually you wouldn't like to have at the gate so now looking at this uh, plot I can do some estimation of the parameters of the circuit first of all I find that the overshoot is uh, 50 percent I've already said that and then from the frequency which is about 400 kilohertz the resonant frequency and the capacitance of one microfarad that can calculate the inductance and it comes to be 150 nano henry that's a lot that's a lot for a board to which a one microfarad capacitor is connected I can only assume that they have put here on this line the current probe which has an inductance and this is in fact the inductance of the current probe so this probe uh, sort of damage the whole operation by introducing such a large inductance. I just understand how you can get such a large inductance from a simple board and one microfarad capacitor. Well, if you have long lines, you'll have some inductance, but this is very high. So, looking at the curve of overshoot as a function of Q, this is the equation, this is the equation, I find that for a 50% overshoot, the Q is 2.5, and since the Q is uh, the characteristic impedance over R, and I have this characteristic impedance already, I can find that in this circuit, the total resistance was 150 milliohm. Okay, so there is some resistance aside from the 10 milliohm of the transistor itself and this is reasonable because you have connection you have wires etc but uh, this is too low because the transistor itself will have a much higher gate resistance so to probe farther into this issue I've set up a simple LT spice uh, simulation uh, schematics here is 20 volt actually I, I use here 15 volt already and here is minus 6 okay this is pre-charge and this is just for turn on and I've put here a 150 nano Henry and this is 300 milliohm is what I found to match the plots that they have the screenshot of the scope so if I use the 150 milliohm from the calculation of the Q I get just too much of an oscillation as compared to what is measured so if I'm adjusting it to 300 milliohm then you see that I have a pretty good match, pretty good match. Now the values of the voltage, the gate voltage and the uh, gate current are a little bit different. This goes only to 33 amp rather than 50, which is reported here. I guess it's okay. So we have a pretty good match of the circuit, of the parasitics of this uh, circuit. So uh, knowing these uh, parasitics, and of course this is the actual transistor the model of the transistor turn on and here is the pre bias to minus 6 volt I've set up a circuit to actually test the operation of this buffer on a real transistor now I didn't find a spice model of a hefty transistor that I need so what I did I took a power transistor here it is this is this transistor and I've duplicated by this current source with respect to the input current okay so this current source is 45 times this current so the total current is 46 and this was adjusted to get a total of 15 microcoulomb like in the module that I've shown okay like in the notes that's not one microfarad just the module that I've shown which is less charge which is more reasonable okay now I have here a current source representing the load and the initial condition is that this current source is feeding this diode and obviously on turn on you'll have a reverse recovery we'll see it later
and this is 250 volt. Now another thing that is being done here, I've added here a integrator so that I can see the charge getting into the gate. So here is the plot. This is the charge now. We see that it uh, converges to 15 microcolon. As I've said, we see here the voltage. Now it's going to 21 volt overshoot from 15. This is too much for this transistor, by the way. And then I have the 24 amp uh, peak for the gate current and this oscillation again because of the high inductance, okay? So if I add the resistance 0 0.5, 0 0.6 to be realistic, still keeping the inductance 150, 900, which is a lot, indeed I see that the very little oscillation, there's some current going back, but the gate is nice. I get a peak now of only 15.5 amp with the second, certainly not uh, 50, okay? Now, if I lower the inductance to something more reasonable, like 30 nano Henry, gate is very nice, and I get here 27 amp because of the lower inductance, which is kind of reasonable. It's not 50, but 27 amp is really nice. So looking at these waveform a little bit uh, deeper here, I see the gate on a zoom scale. This is the Miller Plateau, and this is determined by the gate current at this stage here, which is only 18 amp, because uh, the gate the threshold is uh, 6 volt of the gate, and we have a 15 volt drive, so the difference is uh, only 9 volt, which is uh, generating an 18 amp current. Here is, by the way, the reverse recovery of the diode, and here is the full time which is determined by this uh, plateau. This is this time here, determining this uh, full time starting when you reach the plateau. So this shows how the circuit works now, and this is now reasonable with the 30 nano Henry inductance. So the idea of this uh, circuit is to overcome the shoot through of this simple approach by having two N channel transistor, and then to have a half bridge driver that would generate the high side drive and the low side drive of this buffer. This is the buffer and this is the actual power transistor. Now as it turns out, there is a much simpler solution to this problem of the overshoot. As I've shown in an earlier video, which is referenced here also, and the link is in this uh, page, the YouTube page of the video that you are now watching. You can just split these two resistors here. You actually save the diode also. And in this case, the problem of the shoot through is really minimized and the current that you will have here are the order of magnitude of the current that you have driving the gate. So this is really not adding a lot of uh, power dissipation to the circuit in the order of 5 to 6% and this solves the problem. So really don't need two transistors with half uh, bridge driver. Uh, this is a much, much simpler solution. So what are the conclusions here? Well, MOSFET transistor really can provide a good solution to high current gate driver. There's no question about that. MOSFET transistor are good buff. Now stray inductance is a severe limiting factor in the drive, we know that. And I don't understand how come they have in this uh, board 150 nanohertz. That's just too much. And I found many other deficiencies in the TI application node, in this particular application node. And as I've shown, a much simpler approach can be used to overcome the short through problem of two MOSFET transistor in a buffer. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.